The holidays have fully returned to the Disneyland Resort. Nearly every land is decorated for the happiest time of the year, and the crowds have returned to celebrate it. A new holiday pops up in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. New plans pop up on the horizon of Disneyland. Celebrities appear to celebrate the holidays. It's that most special time of the year, which happens to be the busiest time of the year. It's your weekly update for everything new this week at the Disneyland Resort. The Main Street USA Escape Tunnel has opened, and you know what that means. Main Street is as busy as could possibly be. Greetings fellow citizens of Disneyland, Bricky here. The holidays are back and so are the crowds and midday parades, which means the escape route of Main Street is back open. And am I glad? I've already got to see a Christmas fantasy parade so far this year. So having to fight my way through Main Street, this is just absolutely perfect. By the way, it's this week's update where I walk around the resort and find everything new that's happened over the week. What's up, bud? How you doing? So let's go on this walk around the Disneyland Resort and find everything that's new as I'm enjoying this peace and quiet on the back corridor and my first time traveling through it since the Thanos snap. Now keep in mind you have two different times each day to see a Christmas fantasy parade, which means you also have two times to avoid the Christmas fantasy parade. If you counter program your day against all of these folks that want to see the parade, you'll find some of the quickest wait times, except for later at night when the park slowly starts to empty out. I know a lot of people told me that I was crazy for saying Marius Nights was a good value. When you look at this chaos around me, I understand what some people are paying for, and I'm not gonna argue it. This is absolutely Christmas chaos, a certain type of chaos that's not right for everybody. Strollers hitting every bit of your legs, people going every which way, cast members overwhelmed. It's the holiday season, back at the Disneyland Resort, and Marius Nights helps you escape a little bit of this holiday mayhem. Marius Nights is not a perfect event, and it's far from being perfect for everyone, but it does offer refuge from this type of extreme crowding that the holiday season brings to Disneyland. Me personally, that alone makes it worth it. Disneyland during the holidays is absolutely chaos. Straight up Christmas chaos. The merriest of mayhem. But I absolutely love it and I'm so excited for it to be back. What a phenomenal time to have the parks open. And after last year, it's even more special. It takes patience, it takes persistence, and it takes planning. And it also takes politeness. And I think that can kind of get lost when it gets that hectic. But at the end of the day, <laughs> it's just magic on top of magic walking down Main Street with this behind you, right? Phenomenal. In 2019, when Star Wars Galaxy's Edge first opened up, it gave Star Wars Extreme fans finally a home location or a home base to celebrate Life Day, a very obscure holiday that was spawned by the 1970s Star Wars Christmas special. I strongly suggest do not watch it. I strongly suggest to watch it. It's a choose your own adventure. It's absolutely horrible, but maybe you need to see it. In 2019, fans declared their own Life Day. Well, in 2020, the parks were unable to return to celebrate Life Day, but this year, the parks were able to do it, officially. And it's interesting, I can't get Darth Vader in this land, or the Mandalorian cannot show up, but Starbucks branding can? I'm pretty sure that's not canon. Neither here nor there, it's fun to see a new celebration popping up in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, a land that typically just kind of stays the same each and every day. Fun to see a little extra magic make its way to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, which at times can be a little monotonous. It's very cool to see Disneyland officially get behind Life Day, but it was even cooler to see what happened back in 2019 when fans took it upon themselves to celebrate Life Day for the first time ever when Galaxy's Edge was open and Star Wars fans had a place to go and celebrate this bizarro holiday. My friend Adam shot a documentary on it. Uh, it was supposed to be a vlog, but I think halfway through Adam realized he was shooting a, a documentary. So I'm going to link that and show you a little snippet of it. But if you really want to celebrate 
Life Day. And if you want to see what the community of Disneyland is capable of outside of the corporate structure and official merchandise, this is one of the best Disneyland vlogs or, or independent documentaries that you'll ever watch. Shout out to Adam the Woo for being in the right place at the right time and really capturing the moment. I've watched nearly all of his videos and I have to say it's his absolute best. Make sure you check that out if you want to celebrate a life day before the parks actually got a hold of it. And there's nothing wrong with the parks getting a hold of it. I want more holidays, more celebrations inside of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I walk through here every week and it's sometimes very hard to find anything new to celebrate. So fun to see something new happening. Wish I could have caught it yesterday, but the schedule has just been wild and I can't come here every single day of the week, even though I want to come here every single day of the week. Make sure you check out that video. It's phenomenal. And can I also give a shout out to the gentleman that goes by the name Obi Sean, who I believe put that independent fan first uh, event together. Sean or Obi Sean is a phenomenal dude that works a lot with charities and really brings Star Wars magic into kids' lives when they absolutely need it the most. The dude's an absolute Star Wars legend, and I think that video only showcases how much some people love this park and how they interpret the brand to make it somewhat of their own. This week, Disney fans got a little gift in their stocking. Toontown is changing. And here we thought the big story of Toontown was going to be Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. And we find ourselves where the plot thickens into us. Now knowing that this land is going to close in March of 2022. Mickey and Minnie not expected to open up to 2023. Going to be an interesting time for the smallest citizens of Disneyland. Not having a place to stretch their legs. But this is the price of progress. In the end, I think it'll be better. I'm working on a very deep dive about the design and inspiration of this Toontown. So after we come back from our Thanksgiving break, I hope to be able to share that with you. And I hope you come back and check the designer's perspective on this build out, what it means for the future, where it means that the Disney Corporation is at intellectually with their design inside of the park. I know that so far 2021 has had a lot of news. It's made a lot of citizens of Disneyland pretty upset. I think there's a lot that we can parse from here that shows that the park does have a long-term strategy to return to the normalcy that celebrates the magic instead of celebrating every new which way to make money off of merchandise and upselling things that used to be free. Definitely an interesting time, but I'm looking for the inspiration and I can't wait to share it with you after my Thanksgiving break. Coming out of left field, something I don't think people were expecting, was hearing that Toontown will be closing March of 2022. Now, we all knew that Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway was going to be getting worked on for quite some time. They've pushed the release date to 2023. But the thing that we didn't anticipate was a complete landscaping and overhaul of the idea of Toontown and how it's designed. Currently, it's very compartmentalized. They fit a lot into a small footprint, which at times can make it feel even smaller. But the new idea is to break down some of those barriers, allow more green spaces, and have a more cohesive Toontown where everything flows together just a little bit better. So for example, Toon Park here, that is firewalled off and isolated, will be more of a flowing green space to give the smallest citizens of Disneyland a little bit more room to stretch their legs and to let kids be kids inside of Disneyland. But going to a deeper meaning inside of this design, what I want to break down for you after my Thanksgiving break is that I think there is a glimmer of hope inside of this illustration that 
they are committed to telling the story of Walt Disney, that they are committed to sharing what makes the park special, the nostalgia, the history, the folklore that is embedded inside of it. I was able to take away a lot of positivity of the future of the parks, creatively speaking, and where it's going and how it is learning to pay better attention to the Disneyland story that so many of us are in love with. I cannot wait to share this with you when I get back from my holiday break. I really found a lot of inspiration and I hope you will too. The Disney Parks Holiday Special was being filmed on Thursday that will air on ABC November 28th and December 25th. That happens to also be Christmas morning. Typically a little hard to stomach because they make it a bit of an infomercial. I think many ways YouTube exists because we rejected the way that Disney has told their story over and over again. We tell it more from a purist. We love the park sense. They tell it more from a buy ticket sense. Nonetheless, it's always fun to see the holidays celebrated inside. You can see the stage underneath that green tarp is the big crane camera that will span over the top of the crowd to give you that sweeping view over the crowd up to, I believe, Pentatonix that was playing on that stage. Here, when we come around the back, we can see the lighting rig that would go up. Those are set laser lights that will be able to track digitally wherever they would like for them to go. You see the backdrop, which I kind of feel like they have used a couple of times before. And then once again, we can see all of the cameras that they have laid out for covering this on that special that will air twice. I hope this year they lean a little bit more into story and a little bit less on ticket sales. Oh, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Over at DCA, they do not have a full-on Christmas parade, but they do have this, I'll say, Cavalcade Plus that comes through that gives a little bit of holiday vibe where Mickey and Minnie and their pals take over the street. It creates a lot of congestion for, I'm going to say, maybe a minute and a half, two minutes of entertainment as it passes you and your family. Definitely, if you can just kind of accidentally catch this worthy of seeing, do not spend too much of your valuable day waiting around for this to happen. And once again, this is a good way to counter-program your day. If you see this on the schedule, maybe it's a time to get 15, 20 minutes off of a ride time. Ride times have been long lately during the daylight hours. So choose your own adventure. Do you need to see five minutes of entertainment or do you need to save 15 minutes on your attraction? It's up to you. As I've been tracking this bizarro little spot that showed up after Avengers Campus opened up, it has now been scheduled as a magic key place to eat during the food festival. Uh, interesting to finally see something go in here. I'm going to track this thing forever because I'm fascinated by this little nook and what it should have been. As you can see, Avengers Campus has its Christmas lights on the Quinjet, but something that is missing is the Avengers tank or, or Jeep that normally sits here in front of the trees that yes, I did jump over. More of those interactive murals have popped up on the side of the ESPN zone. Last week, they were just on the other side of the wall. Four more popped up on this backside to celebrate Disney Plus. And that's all I need Disney Plus is some of that book of Boba Fett. And I need it right now. Grand Californian has fully decorated up its lobby for the Christmas season. A big old ginormous Christmas tree is ready to greet you, as well as the gingerbread house made on site. Some very great detailing inside of this. If you really look around the characters, everything here, fully edible, fully sculpted inside the lobby. It was Mickey Mouse's birthday on Thursday and somebody thought to put the pin on the snowman version of Mickey Mouse. Big giant frosted tree. I think maybe those ornaments aren't edible, but nearly everything else is, including this homage to the stained glass windows of the lounge and as well as Pluto, Mickey, and Minnie's themed stockings hanging over the fireplace. Well done, chefs. Well done. And finally, as we wrap up everything new that I was able to spot this week, I've finally been able to see Big Thunder Mountain fully operational. The last couple of weeks, as I've showed you, there's been the cast members hanging out at the entrance and exit that it's been going down. But this is the first week that I went out to film the weekly update that I like to drop for you folks each and every Friday. And what do you know? Big Thunder was finally rolling on the day that I had the least amount of time as I'm fighting against daylight savings time to film these weekly updates and to get everything pretty much inside of some daylight. Look at you, beautiful. Glad to have you back. 
Now switching over to some of the projects that we are tracking, Pelican's Landing, I think we're going to have some good news probably by the next time we all get to the resort because it looks like it's pretty much done and ready to reopen for everybody. And this is, uh, this is going to be a great little spot on the edge of the rivers of America. Friends, how sick does that look? A new expanded walkway, a tiered uh, patio to hang out and catch the vibes. As somebody who absolutely loves Fowler's Harbor, my favorite spot of the park, one of my favorite characters from the origin of Disneyland, this is my kind of ride. Pelican Landing, I'm a big guy. I'm a big Pelican Landing guy. This is going to be phenomenal. I'm sure by the time you see this video, there will already be citizens of Disneyland hanging out there, and I hope to be one of them real soon. This is my kind of project. Happy to see that even with everything that's going on in the world, that these type of things are still happening. It's the Sim City aspect of the park that makes me love it so much. This is phenomenal. <laughs> this is my kind of, this is my jam right here. Our final project that we're tracking is whatever's happening over at Tarzan's Treehouse. Doesn't seem like it's moving that fast. Hopefully it'll be open just to loosen up the congestion as it gets busy on the edge of Adventureland going into New Orleans Square. That's it for projects that we're tracking. Let's move over to some construction. As excited as I am about Toontown getting that overhaul, it's going to be a little bit sad because when those construction walls go up and we can't go into the tunnel, we won't be able to see it anymore. So therefore, right now, the World of Color Lagoon is our big major construction project because there's no way they can hide this bad boy. Look at the stage that has been erected on the back side of the lagoon, right inside of Mickey's Fun Wheel Forever to Me. We saw last week that they were starting to put the scaffolding down and I said, what are they building? We now know a stage to get out to these different pedestals that we've seen them actually erect from the ground up over the last weeks of updates. This main canal here is pretty interesting where you see the table over to the left of the stage that houses all the fountains. Over to the right, we see where the projectors go, but in the middle of this canal, it's like a tech canal where all of the major data and water pumping is going out to the various touch points of information. Like this canal is essentially the data canal that goes out to everything that has to interact. Here is one of those pedestals up close where we can see they've now built a stage fully around that, which gives them the ability to take carts and materials and just roll it over to whichever one of these pedestals that they're working on, where I believe the projectors are going to go. So this has been a pretty big project and it would make sense that you would want to have that smooth flat space to get all of your materials as close as possible. They also have a railing around the table where all the fountains are. We've seen the pop-up tents over there where I'm assuming they're just going through and getting all of the various fountains geared in. After the holidays, we'll start doing a big breakdown on how all of this world of color technology works. But for right now, with all the holiday stuff, we just don't have the time because there's been a massive amount of stuff that's happened at the park. When you see these black borders, we're time traveling. Let's go back to last week where I was able to spot, hey, they're getting ready to build something out here in the lagoon. And what they were building was the bottom of the stage, which as you see, takes a decent amount of effort to get that tabletop or that stage top level because it's being built all around the contour and curve of the lagoon that creates the depth of water and also the shallow parts of the water near where gas maybe could potentially fall into four feet versus something that would be over your average gas head. But coming to the back side of Pixar Pier, we can see that there's this ramp with a decent amount of materials. I'm assuming this is where they bring in a bobcat and just put everything on top of this stage and then get it out to the different construction zone that they're working on. But yeah, a big, big amount of effort and energy to get all of this squared away so they can put in these projectors. I, I'm impressed each and every week. It seems as if the scale of this project increases. Looking back to the last couple of weeks, we also noticed that while they had everything drained out, they were doing some maintenance around the edge of the lagoon. And we can see that this project has now wrapped up. The rocks have been repainted. The housing that goes around whatever device is in there, you can see that there's a line of data going out to it. I'm not sure if it's a pump or a projector, but whatever lives inside of there, that project has been wrapped up. Now, when we look at these columns that go around the Zephyr, 
I went back in time to see what actually lives on top of those. And you can see it's a tea bar with two little lights that shine up at the Zephyr, as well as a red light, I guess, to let the boats know that they're there. It'll be interesting. Are they getting new lighting on top of these or they're just going to tear these down and repave these while they're in the process of putting together everything inside of the lagoon so something we'll definitely be checking out each and every week it's been fun to see how this big core project of world of color has been going down they also said hey while we got the water out let's just go ahead and go through the entire thing so hopefully this will mean that when world of color comes back it will stay up for quite some time because this is a much needed part of Disney's California adventure and it's nighttime culture. Show's phenomenal, the technology's amazing. I would hope that maybe this will make the show even better and give it the ability to go for the long haul because it does have a lot of downtime over the years. Well, it looks like another project is wrapping up on us. This is current footage where we can see they have put the Geo back together over at Fillmore's. Uh, that was all taken down the last couple of weeks. We could actually see it down to just that steel work and those panels were removed. They kind of feel like they're a little bit brighter. I don't know if they repainted them or what. I mean, being in the California sun will fade anything over time. But this is where the project lied just last week when it was down to the steel work. But it also seems like those construction walls got kicked out a little bit. Over in the Redwood Grizzly Trail, we can see that there is a Santa meet and greet. Didn't go into it, trying to keep a schedule, but I did want to showcase all this fun uh, faux woodcut ornaments that they have out front that kind of feel like Christmas cookies. I love that very tactile Christmas vibe. The front of this looks phenomenal and exciting that kids have a place where they can go meet Santa Claus inside of one of the parks. The Festival of Holidays has also brought over some extra added decor on San Francisco Street. A little part of the park that could use some TLC or a little bit of extra love. So this meet and greet here has added a little bit of holiday flair to it, as well as over on the other side of San Francisco Street, you can see they've put a couple of the drummer boys up that feel like they are something that's been taken from It's a Small World. Really like these characters. Don't know how DCA it is, but it does definitely feel very Disneyland. And then last week I was showcasing that all of these little booths had been closed down. They are now open as the food fest is going. I don't really cover food, but I did think I would show you the merchandise booth. All right, let's hop over to the Christmas headliner and DCA Route 66 is fully decorated for the holiday season. And oh, is it a sight to see? And it worked out by the time we got there. It was right around sunset. And does this land really shine? Not only at nighttime, but nighttime during the holidays. Route 66, Radiator Springs, it's themed around that moment in U.S. pop culture when Christmas really started to get marketed, really started to get commercialized, and this land just invokes that Americana nostalgic values of when Christmas was all about big bulbs, big tinsel, big designs, and just a big old Christmas kiss when you roll down the main street of USA anywhere love that it embraces the Rankin Bass era of Christmas when it just really started to come together and find its commercial identity and its brand identity as what Christmas would look like going forward here in America as part of pop culture. You can't love Disneyland and not love pop culture. Flows V8 has a subtle bit of decorations on it this year. I mean, the building is just a masterful set piece all year long put on those air filter garlands with the lights that are all matching the color of flows that magenta and cyan that is all around it I'll throw in a little bit of purple i do love that they're using the big bulbs but changing up the color palette to match its master destination over at cozy cones we're seeing that the decorations are back adding in a little bit more of Christmas flair at what an adorable location this is inside of the park. I mean, that front entryway just shines as what I would like to think that America used to look like before the expressway system was developed. Did notice that this little star wasn't lit up. I went back and looked at archival footage to see that it indeed 
typically is lit up. This is from the final Christmas in 2019 before the Thanos snap. And then when I really looked in there, I could see the bulbs were in there, just not lit up. So hey, we all blow a fuse around the Christmas time. This star will come back, I feel assured. I would like to always point out that the telephone poles on the left with the lights attached to them, those are in Radiator Springs all year long because the movie only has telephone poles on one side. But during Halloween and holiday, they add that right side column of telephone poles so they can do the draped garland across. Flo's V8 is missing this year one of my favorite decorations, which is it used to be when you would go through Main Street anywhere USA, you would see big garland type icons going up and down the street. Definitely missing that gas can that for whatever reason didn't make its way back this year. I just really love that nostalgia, that throwback, because that is something of my youth that I remember seeing. But what a beautiful shot this is. Radiator Springs and Christmas goes together like peanut butter and peanut butter. Now, last week when we were in here, they had not fully decorated Cars Land. And as I was looking around, I noticed another thing that was missing. Looking back in 2019, you see the little Christmas village over there on that mid-century atomic age orange uh, end table with the hairpin legs. That little Christmas village is not inside of the motel yet. I wonder if they're like, nobody will notice. Nobody even knows it's there. Oh, I noticed. I notice it's not there. Please put it back. I beg of thee. And if you come over here to the check-in desk, if you look around in these uh, cones, you might find Buzz Lightyear's legs as he's trying to scurry and hide. And do I see a little hidden Mickey down there on the bottom shelf? A a, a hidden Mickey from, was that D, D Street? Was that the name of that shop that used to exist? Over in the Wonderground Gallery where they kind of got into the vinyl toy collectible scene that I was just a part of last weekend at Designer Con. But this area really does come together. Even Sarge throwing a little patriotic love for the holidays and country with those uh, atomic age fireworks that are on top of Sarge's as well as the red, white, and blue, which looks very green from the neon sign. Very hard for my camera to detect it. And then this little Americana Christmas tree out front. But Definitely awesome to see all of this come together. And then over at Mater's, we see the spark plug on top of the tire tree that has like resin snow cast all over it. And then let's zoom up to these lights that don't look like the Christmas lights we have on our homes. They look more like tail lights or warning lights, something that would make sense in their world, not ours. Here's also a shout back to 2019 because with Fillmore's being down, we're not getting the Christmas decoration. There is the metal Christmas tree there with the peace symbols cut inside of it, as well as all the ornamentation that typically would go around the sign. I guess with it being down for construction, they're just going to skip the holiday decor and I get it. But Cars Land during season speedings, what a place to be, what a thing to have in your backyard. What a California Christmas classic. Let's wrap up today going over into downtown Disney where they're starting to put the Christmas trees up. Now, I spied the big tree that they have down by the ESPN zone. This was last year's big tree at the resort. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, buddy. This tree had a different home. This is the tree that they put down on the corner of the Esplanade. This was the biggest tree at the resort last year where you could get your holiday pick in front of it, just like those two good boys did. And now it has moved further away down to the ESPN Fun Zone, sort of the entryway into downtown Disney, if you will. But as I walked down the main thoroughfare, I found some exposed dirt where it seemed like I had caught them on Thursday, slowly putting it all together. And interesting that they started at both ends, kind of leaving the middle vacant, which I guess if you knew you couldn't get it done in one single night, it's kind of a good idea. Give people a little Christmas kiss on the way in, the way out, and in the middle, they'll still be high from buzzing around all that Christmas that they won't even realize that they're just looking at exposed dirt. Here last year, there was an amazing tree that was red and white striped. And this year we have a tree that has more ornaments than branches. Interesting. Hope that red and white candy cane tree comes back. I loved it. 
I know on last week's update I was worried. I was worried that we would get these instead of these. Double using the street signs down Hollywood Boulevard. Santa, the star, the candy cane wraps around the poles of all return. And it's absolutely one of my favorite decorations because it reminds me so much traveling through small town America when I was a kid, looking out the back window of my dad's 1977 Monte Carlo, just pressed against that little slit of a window that the car had to see all of the Christmas decorations. Back then, America didn't go so hard on the holidays, so whatever little bit of Christmas you could find was always a treasure, which is probably why this big metallic garland and all of these vintage decorations really set me off because it looks just like the type of thing that I would have a little pressed face against the window, excited to explore and find a little bit of Christmas on our travels to see friends and family and loved ones. Oh, they're back and I'm so pumped. And off to the distance, you see what I see? The best decoration in Hollywood land? I think it has returned. Friends, as I've said a couple times in the video, I will be taking next week mostly off from YouTube, maybe fully off, who knows? Taking my wife and her parents in from New York out to the park on Tuesday and just gonna celebrate the holidays. But I wanted to take a little moment to tell you each that I'm thankful for you, in particular, my friends over at Club 1313. This community that we've built and how you've enabled me to make all of this content, I cannot thank you enough. I have had a tremendous year and I owe it to so many of you. I really, truly do feel blessed. Santa Claus is back after taking a year off and it's so exciting to see this version of Santa, one of the absolute best decorations in all of DCA. It just has that classic vibe of being on a main street on a thoroughfare with the vintage decorations, everything that I grew up on when I would go through Main Street USA, no matter whether it was the city that I was raised in, in Louisville, Kentucky, or all the small rural towns around Kentucky and Southern Indiana. It is so exciting to see this vintage decoration return. Friends, if you're looking for a little something to be thankful for this year. I know it's been kind of a wild time to be a fan of the Disney theme parks. Everything's been going really fast trying to get back to normal, but a little something to keep in mind to take grace for everything that we do have. I'm currently standing beyond the barrier this time last year. That's right, when California Adventure reopened Buena Vista Street for shopping, we got a surprise bonus. A little bit of Grizzly Peak, as well as a little bit of Hollywood Land. And Hollywood Boulevard was opened up, and I'm currently standing as far as we could go. That's right, one year ago, this was our barrier. This was the moment. This was as far as we could go, and hey, it felt really good to get this deep inside of Disney's California Adventure. So if you're a little bit worried about reservations, magic keys, magic this and that, and the lack of magic or Genie Plus, keep in mind, last year, this was all we had. So if you're looking for something to be thankful for when you think about your exploration inside of the Disney parks, uh, this is something that I'm thankful for, that I no longer stand here at a rope dreaming about being able to go further inside of DCA and Disneyland was just straight up locked. Not even, not even an option. And not only can I now fully breathe without half of my face covered up, but you can actually go inside of many of the stores, which were closed. This street was basically just a showpiece to give you a little bit of vibes, and oh, did we need those vibes? And off in the distance, something else that's back, a Christmas tree. That's right, last year was the year with no Christmas tree inside of either one of the parks. Downtown Disney did some heavy lifting with some more traditional Christmas trees. The year before, they did like these neon sort of artistic trees. But last year, we got real Christmas trees in downtown Disney. But this year, they're back inside of both parks, which we fully have available to us for all those Christmas vibes. So keep in mind, what we have today is so much more than what we had a year ago. And sure, are things 100% normal? But are they closer to what they were in 2019? Absolutely. Yes, and for that I'm thankful even though sometimes yes, it's easy to remember what we don't have But if you stop and take an inventory We have so much more today than what we had a year ago And I think that gets lost on all of us including myself. I am big time Big time guilty of taking things for granted, but in this holiday I always like to pause and remind myself of everything I got and to let go of all those things that I feel like I've lost it's an interesting year. There was a moment when we were all just begging for the park to reopen, and now it has, and it's not always perfect. And I think we have the right to complain. I think we have the right to evaluate. 
but we also have to request of ourselves, take stock of all of the great things that we have, and let's just not forget last year. Let's not let that be something that was wasted. Let's let it always be a valuable lesson in each of our lives. Hey friends, I just wanna share that I am thankful for each and every one of you this holiday season. Uh, yeah, last year was really wild, but it only made me a better person. It only made Disneyland more enjoyable. It only made this a better community. So to everyone who's watched every video or just one minute of one, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm very, very thankful to have all of this, and I hope that it shows in the work that I put in, always trying to entertain you because I do not take any of this for granted, including you. That's going to do it for our weekly update. I'll be back two weeks from this Friday to give you another one. Thank you so much for going on this journey with me, and thank you so much for spending this year with me. Ha, 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 ha.